Yeah, that wasn't a paper, SJ. That was a, a talk at a conference. Okay. Uh, ILR, yeah, I can go ICLR 2019 well, conference. Yeah, there's a car chase going on outside. Happens every day. Um, that the the comms paper does not explain in general how the cortex works. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on that we can't, we haven't explained. But it's a good start to try and explain the common cortical circuit. That's what we're trying to nail down: the common cortical circuit. Read the comms paper in comms okay, plus, me, and that's a good start. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I've been working on um, this, the, a model for how how head direction cells update in 3D. That's um, very much inspired by this paper, the dual axis rotation rule for updating head direction cell reference frames um, by Hector Page, Jonathan Wilson, and Kate Jeffrey. Um, Again, this is not a neural model per se, it's more of a conceptual model. Yeah, um, in the sense that, like, if you think of head direction cells as a ring, uh, and such that there's a bump active somewhere in that ring at any point in time, as the animal performs a movement in, a, in any 3D direction, what happens in that ring? Uh, and so I'm not worrying about modeling cells here, but you can imagine it as a bunch of little cells here and a bump of activity moving through them. But instead, I'm just treating it as like, where is the bump or how, how is the bump moving? So that, that just assumes I have this one, uh, one dimensional, um, uh, or set of orientation cells there. Um, but to represent the 3d orientation, that's not sufficient, right? Right. So you, so, so is this address the representation of 3d orientation or is it just saying, Hey, how would this, this, these orientation cells change? And so we model that 3d orientation is represented by this. And the, what direction is gravity? Yeah, so or, or some is, other reference. But but there was a question: How would I use that information? How would I, if I wanted to actually update my prediction based on three D orientation? I need to cover both of those. Mm -hmm. Does this go into that direction? And just well, says, no, I just have the information. Well, but you need to know the head direction to do the correct. I prediction. understand, but but yeah, uh, I'm just getting. I'm going back to sort of the, the bigger picture. If, if the goal of this is to say. Given I have this information, can I can I predict what I'm actually going to see happen in these orientation cells? But the second part of that problem is okay. Now that I have that, how would I take that information plus the gravity vector to do something? You know, how would I literally in a neuron to represent that and do something um, with yeah, it? Yeah, I'm not doing that second okay. part. I'm not consuming it. I'm generating yeah, it. All right, this is a model. How do we how do we generate the behavior that's observed in these orientation cells? Yeah. Uh, in rats, what would be the model that that explains that. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I mean, the task is um, given a movement and given the direction of gravity in your in your egocentric frame and the rat's frame and the agent's frame. Both of these and the agent's frame determine how the head direction cells should update. And um, just to first, I had to um, have some way of testing. Uh, whether a strategy is working. Uh, what, uh, it, it took a while for me to come up with the right update rules. So first I had to come up with what's something, what's one way to do this that I know is right, even though it's not how the biology does it. Like us as outside observers, how can we find the ground truth? What should the head direction update be? Um, so in their system, like quick review is like um, rotation, yaw rotation, rotating on your current frame always causes the head direction cells to um, to update w w in, in your rotation direction. Um, and their second update rule in that paper is that as the current plane that you're standing on, like the rat walking on a, on a hill or a sphere right here, mm -hmm. as that rotates about the gravity direction, that should also cause this yeah. to, up, to yeah. update. So that's just a quick review. Uh, so 
given to 3D orientations, which you can depict as being on surfaces of a sphere while pointing in a certain direction. These are little rats. Uh, the way to, to, to the, the way analytically us as outside of observers to tell how the head direction should update from here to here. Um, one way to do that is split this movement into rather than rotating directly from here to here, um, split it into three movements where you first move directly into gravity. So gravity is just vertical in this picture. Yeah. Uh, so so rotate the, the current plane you're standing on directly toward gravity so that you're essentially standing on top of this orientation globe. That shouldn't, by the way, that movement should not change the orientation itself, right? Uh, Correct. Because you're, you're, you're not, you're not you're rotating around your own axis. So. Right, yeah. right. Um, now perform a pure yaw rotation. Yeah, that um, does change it. Yep. And now rotate down uh, directly on your current plane down to the end point. Hey, Marcus, will you move your water bottle? Yeah. Thanks. Um, and that shouldn't change it. Uh, yeah, that shouldn't do, change it. So by splitting into the, the, these three movements, it becomes trivial. The, the correct head direction change from this point to this point is this rotation angle. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can just so, if you solve for all of this, you can find it analytically. And this was how I had a notion of correctness. Um, I'll go ahead and show. So this. just a purely mathematical yeah. way of doing it, and, and you can. Yeah. Now I'll, I'll in a couple of minutes I'll walk through. Uh, That's this is more like a proof. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Right. It's not. This, this is this, is, this is how I'm gauging correctness. Yeah. Here now I'll show a um, quick simulation of of me achieving this, where I show both, here's the correct one, here's um, here's the model actually succeeding at this. So I'll show screen. Okay. Uh, so to just show, uh, oops, I didn't mean to zoom. Um, here I'm showing two different views of, it, of an agent. Um, here, like one of these, I'll just, um, Expand that and run it. Um, so he, at the top, you see what's actually happening. At the top, you see an agent is uh, uh, an agent here is just this some um, this box. Um, it's it's just rotate, rotating in space. Um, but I'm visualizing it moving over the sphere. Yeah. Uh, um, now we're we're looking at this on a projector right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it, should, it should be changing in this regard too. Right? Yes. So um, we're looking at this on a projector right now, so you're not going to be able to see this super clearly. But there's like uh, there is a um, there's a ghost agent that's moving up to the top, rotating and um, and going back down. I'll, that's, I'll, that's, I'll, what the, uh, that's what the second little circle. Right? Um, so you'll, yeah, that's also what the second little circle is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there's that little ghost agent right there. Yeah. Um, so you can see I implemented the ghost agent. I solved all this. I solved this formula, uh, and then. Um, then I did a lot of other work to make it where the actual bump moves smoothly in a correct way. Uh, and that's just a- Well, that's showing you, right? You're showing me that actually that you're still working. So, yeah, so, so here I'm already showing it working and then I'm gonna say how it worked. Uh, and now just to demonstrate that it works, I'll just like, here's a, ser a series of random movements. And you, you know it's correct because the solid bump is always meeting up with the, yeah. with the yeah. ghost bump. And no. so, yeah, I mean, if I just let this go, it'll keep working. No. Um, I'm gonna make it stop so that it doesn't eat up my CPU. Uh, and I'll minimize that. Okay, so yeah, that's that's my um, the, the demo here. I'll stop sharing. So, um, nice. yeah, so it, was, <laughs> it, it took a while to get, to get it uh, right. And it ended up being quite simple in the end. But building up to that required, like, it was like I was building a lot of scaffolding um, just to get an initial version that's working that is given too much information for free. And I pulled out some of that information, pulled out more of that information, and just kept removing scaffolding until something nice appeared. Uh, so here, I'll, I'll just talk through a little bit of that. It's like uh, Michelangelo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Move the stone, until, they remove the stone yeah. until you have this statue. <laughs> It's, it's a little bit comparable to us, can, us assuming we have this magic location signal, and then later we removed that scaffold, and later we went and found a way to yeah. generate a location signal. Yeah. I, I went through one of these processes of my own on this, but I won't show you the intermediate steps. Um, 
So to give this a, this a little bit more definition, here I said given movement and direction of gravity, um, movement can be specified in different ways. And I think the natural way to uh, specify rotational movement analytically like for, for these purposes is to talk in terms of angular velocity. Um, whereas with grid cells, we talk about velocity and we, we have grid cells update in response to a velocity. Uh, with head direction cells, it's the same except with angular velocity. And what I mean by that, like a, a, um, the way you can think about rotations and angular velocity is that any rotation of anything, of an agent, of whatever, can be, um, can be specified by an axis of rotation. So just what way is this axis pointed and the rotation amount or the rate of change around that axis. And so basically this is how I'm thinking of movement is it is an angular velocity applied for some amount of time. And just the notation often used for this is omega. And the, and the, the axis there is sort of your direction in some sense. I mean, yeah. it's because I've been making this point earlier that the, the you know, inference at a point, like the, the angular inference is similar to like a linear movement inference, uh, you know, the same thing. You're, and so I'm just trying to make that connection here as well. Uh, uh, so, so like if I ask myself, uh, where am I in the location when I move? I have a velocity or I have to have a direction. And here you're saying, where's my new orientation when I move? I have a velocity and I also have some, I have some point at which my velocity is measured from and that's, that's your, your, your axis there. Is that, is that correct? Is that, yeah, that's, okay. that's roughly correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I like that analogy. I'm trying to stick with it. Uh, the, the, these two systems are very similar. And both of them are operating on velocity. Velocity so, yeah. and, yeah, they're both operating velocity. When this happens, and when they both have metric, ref, they both have reference frames, metric reference frames. One's, one's angular and one's linear. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true, but that's how I think about it. Okay. All right, good. I just want to try to understand it. Yeah. So um, this. So an angular velocity can be specified as a, the direction of this and uh, its, its, its magnitude. Yeah. Uh, and so you, conveniently, you can actually express an angular velocity as a single vector where the direction the vector is pointing is the axis and the length of the vector is, is the velocity itself, mm -hmm. uh, which it, it ends up working out nicely for this. Um, but I, I'll just leave it at that. So now just to just to restate the task in terms of these this notation, given a movement and direction of gravity, given movement and direction of gravity, yeah. uh, figure out what is the update to the to the head direction cells. Uh, so I tried a bunch of different ways of specifying this. And um, finally, the way that worked was um, to now think of rotation. Now I just laid out one way to think of it, angular velocity, uh, but another uh, another way that um, people specify rotations is uh, this is basically Euler did everything. This is called the Euler axis. This is called Euler angles, uh, and um, it, he he just he solved all of these things um, and. So another way to specify uh, rotation is with this series of Euler angles. And I've shown one example of how that can be set up. And the one in the example, this is the one that's relevant to us. Uh, you can specify a rotation using three angles uh, where you, you're doing a rotation. If this is like a gyroscope, whatever you want to call it, uh, rotating about this axis, rotating about this axis, and rotating about the center one. Um, if you set these up in the right way, there are a number of right ways you can do it. You can reach any orientation by by uh, by turning these three or by performing these three rotations. And um, so, just to just like to envision this for a second, um, if you if you picture a, a constant angular velocity, if you picture this agent just kind of rotating about this axis smoothly at a constant rate. Uh, so now picture this agent doing the same thing. It, this is rotating smoothly at a constant rate. These, but, but you have different axes here, uh, right? Yeah. Well, um, 
these are, are like three thousand. I have, I have to see some down was around. Yeah, yeah. That weird number. Yeah, but imagine they're actually undergoing the same rotation. Yeah, so oh. I'm just trying to understand. So basically, I'll have a, a, a linear velocity up there, but the, the velocity around these three axes down here will be not linear. Right, right. that's exactly so what you're getting at. Right. Yeah. The, yeah, these these are going to be. Um, these are soil or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. exactly. So at some points, like these are going to be updating quickly, and other points are not going to be. Yeah. Um, and in this picture, uh, this a solution or like the, the, the with the initial scaffolding was um, that the correct update to the head direction cells is this angle plus this angle, where the middle one is basically capturing yaw rotations. You say this angle plus this angle. Oh yeah. This is it, it mean. Literally, how how far around I go there on the circle? Is it the sum of those angles? Or are you saying I should, I, should have said, I should have said the change, the delta in this angle, and the delta of this angle equal to the the angular change in the in that thing? Yeah, we're yeah. not talking, we're not talking like, velocities. We're just saying if I if I this one changes ten degrees, now one changes twenty degrees, that one's going to change thirty degrees. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and like, and you, you can picture these quite course, easily. Because some of these will then be going negative and positive, yeah. right? So yeah. then it doesn't always add. Yeah. Right. And you can picture these quite easily as like this middle one is basically yaw rotation, mm -hmm. like you're here, yeah. you're rotating. Yeah. And this outside one is basically staying at a constant latitude on the globe, uh -huh. moving around yeah. the globe. Uh, yeah. So it, it so, intuitively yeah. fits these yeah. two update rules. Yeah. So basically, your your change relative to the routing vector is going to be represented by two different angles, uh, and your change relative two. to your yaw is going to be. And your change so relative to your yaw is going to Okay, you said the change relative to gravity. Well, the gravity, like, like, you're just going between different reference frames here, it seems like. So, I'm, again, I'm, I'm not challenging, I'm just Sorry, that's my fault. Yeah. So, as I move, if I think about just my change relative to my body's reference frame, the yaw, then it's just a simple angular change. Mm -hmm. But my the change relative to the gravity vector is much more complex. Yes, exactly. And so that's yeah. going to require at least two dimensions to specify that, and those are really the total two dimensions. They're really yeah. Really, yeah, yeah. And and one uh, one other nice thing here is um, one thing awkward with these angles is that um, is that for for most cases there is a um, one to one mapping. Like there's a one to one. Here, I'll just say it this way. Suppose you're standing on the North Pole. Uh, and you rotate. Uh, yeah. There's an ambiguity up here. Do you do you represent that by rotating this or by rotating this? Uh, so um, I, either it can be correct. The thing I wanted to point out here is that ambiguity is solved by the fact that head direction cells represent the sum of them. Yeah. Uh, so it's that that ambiguity disappears. So yeah. So the, the, there's a there's something computationally elegant about representing the sum of these. Is, okay. is just what I'm saying. Um, so now getting from here um, to like a final um, simple formula took time, uh, and I'm just going to gloss over that. Um, so solving for how these are changing over time, and then just like, and then just like pummeling those formulas into being simpler and simpler and simpler. Um, what popped out was this, uh, where the change in head direction is equal to, well, basically the yaw rotation um, plus this formula that um, that multiplies the the rotation about other axes times the, the current gravity direction. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I, I wish you could see the pages of stuff that just simplified into this, uh, but, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll see you say that. You can just visualize it again, okay? <laughs> yeah, so, um, I believe you. <laughs> so, so yeah, this is what pops up, um, you, and it, it's, it's kind of intuitive. It, it, um, okay, it's like, well, it's mostly intuitive. I haven't fully grasped, grasped this term of it yet, but think, think of it as a differential equation. It's like, what is the instantaneous change to the head direction cells? Is equal to the instantaneous change of the yaw. Uh, so now this was confusing me is y of z appearing on the right there as well. Because uh, it's uh, it, my my first intuition would be oh well if all I'm doing is changing. Well, you know this is the gravity coordinate of z. Uh, oh, oh oh okay so uh, they're not the same thing exactly. Uh, yeah the the rotational velocity around z is its own independent thing. Cool. What I was thinking is. 
as I change, if I'm just changing my yaw, that W term changes, but everything else should stay the yeah. same. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it shouldn't be over there. Okay, I got it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, this this popped out at 9 p.m. last night, uh, and oh, so I go. We waited. Like, like I, on one, Wednesday morning, I had this, and I proved yeah. that this worked, and so I knew that like I was on the right track. But getting to there took a while. So, uh, now, oh, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, w one thing that well, one one thing is like, okay, this all simplified. I, I went through this elaborate process of setting this up, and this popped up out. There's a chance that by just looking at this formula for a while, I'll realize, oh, here's a much simpler way I could have done it. And that will cause me to realize something. Maybe I'm missing something obvious. Uh, so I don't fully understand this. Like one plus G sub Z on the, on the denominator, I don't know. Someone who's experienced with like mechanics might look at that and say like, oh, that's the dot product minus yeah. the cross yeah. product or something like that, something really basic like that. But I, I don't have that right now. Um, so just to um, bring this back to, um, I, I wrote this musing section, just a thought on this. Um, to bring this back to like, the, the idea that grid, sort of unifying this with grid cells, thinking of them as performing two different things. Um, you can set these up where, uh, this is basically the formula formula we used in the grid cell paper with Mirko and Hila. Hey, Falco, where, hi everybody. Like, where the change in phase is, is very basic. We're watching it's, a live research meeting. projection matrix times the velocity. Okay, I'm into HQ. Uh, and here, um, and, and this is a That's two for a single grid cell module. Yeah, for a single grid cell yeah. module. For head direction cells, uh, it is another type of matrix times yeah. over velocity. Uh, and in this case, it's a two by two. Here's yeah. a one by three. But I, I should actually two by three if this is a 3D grid cell thing. But anyway, um, I'm at the stage of still processing this. Um, one, one thing that I want to know is, OK. I only tested when the animal is right side up, not when the animal is upside down. Um, and it wasn't. And, and here's where here's what's weird though. This formula should work when it's upside down. The only reason I haven't tested it is because I don't have a ground truth for upside down. I, I don't know what is correct. I don't know what the correct behavior is for upside down. Um, so one of my next steps is. To, I want to know, do you does think that's this, an important, do you think that's an important point? If this just magically works in all situations with orientation, like if the whole yeah. thing, if there, if there is no upside down problem, yeah. then that would be nice to know. Okay. Uh, and so, so you're walking into the assumption there seems to be an upside down problem, which is what was in that paper, yeah. right? So yeah. uh, you're saying, hey, well, is it really a problem? Maybe we can solve it. Uh, yeah. So basically, it, I feel like I'm, uh, from yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Until By the way, just imagining myself being a rat upside down on this sphere, um, it's not clear that I solved that problem. Yeah. You know, there are situations where you just, the world doesn't make much sense, and yeah. that could be one of them. <laughs> yeah. So it's not clear we actually do solve that problem. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, yeah. I, I, I just want to see if, okay. if, if the solution does just naturally yeah. fall out, yeah. then that's good to know, but it might not. And yeah. I want to understand why, if not. Um, yeah. So basically, from like, you know, la last night at 6 p.m. until right now, I feel like I've been um, grabbing more and more low hanging fruit because this all clicked into place and this all simplified. And um, so I, you're catching me like a snapshot of me yeah. while I'm still grasping at the fruit yeah. now, now that I've poured a bunch of time into reaching this and then simplifying it into that. Yeah. What are those musings? Oh, yeah, uh, that, that was where I talked about like- um, Just like uh, the parallels between the grid cell update rules and the- Yeah, it? yeah, so in both, in, in both cases, grid cells, head direction cells, were applying some sort of projection matrix to the velocity. Uh, and I mean, this is just the, um, th this is just the thing from the, the paper with Marco and Hila where um, is n by or two by n two, two by three for example if it's three D. The idea that you're applying some sort of matrix to a velocity to get in, to get an update. Uh, I'm just trying to tr put these next to each other and see if any mm -hmm. any anything comes to mind. I still don't fully understand this projection matrix, but it's it's what popped out and it's what worked in this in the simulations. Um, so that's pretty much what I had. 
that's nice. Oh, that that's what you would multiply W by two. Yeah, that, that's that, the, that, that, I, I took that and pulled yeah. out. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, okay. Tend to personal problems here, not problems, but otherwise it doesn't take off. So. Um, okay. Um, so again, you know, with 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 uh, with. I wouldn't say what bothers me about this is what I want to know is, um, and I want, I'm going to keep taking you on to solve these problems, is, so we have like a grid cell module is insufficient to represent through location, right? And, um, and even in a, two, a single grid cell module is insufficient to represent your location in, in 2D space and portion of 1D space, 3D space. And a single uh, orientation module is insufficient to represent your orientation. Um, so, as in the paper you did with Merco, you say, oh, well, uh, uh, well, the paper of Greenwald, which was a framework paper, said, oh, we have multiple visual modules, we can represent our location uniquely in 3D space. And the paper you did with Merco said, oh, we have multiple visual modules, and the more we can represent our, our location um, uh, uniquely in 3D space. Um, and so I, I, I just jumped on the same idea earlier, saying, oh, well, we take multiple 1D orientation cells uh, modules, we can create representation to 3D or orientation by having different projections on them. And that doesn't seem to be what the brain is doing, according to this paper. And, um, and, and there's evidence suggesting that we don't really have multiple um, orientation modules that, that are updating differently. And there's no, and we actually don't seem to have any evidence that there's multiple grid cell modules that are updating differently that have different projections in 3D space. So there, there's no evidence for that either. There's right. no evidence against it necessarily, but we don't have any evidence for it that the paper did more closely is, is reflected. So, so now we say, okay, here's this new idea. The new idea is we only have one, only one dimension of orientation cells, but it's going to work because we have the gravity vector. Okay. Now, really, that kind of leaves open where's the gravity vector come from? Uh, you can imagine that you know, some animal might know the gravity, but we can't assume that from for finding our orientation to objects in the world because they're moving. So it doesn't really work there. This could be any reference vector. That yeah, I know. But, that, but it leaves gravity. open the question all of a sudden I need to define that reference vector. How does that, where does that reference vector come from? And how do I update it up to these rules and all this kind of stuff? It just, it just says, okay, it didn't work the simple way. The simple, elegant, orthogonal way, we just have multiple of these guys. Um, and, um, but it doesn't work like that. Nature seems to discover a different technique. And so, great, right, great. Right. Uh, and that, I'm going to go with that because it's always the right thing to do. Follow nature because it's always going to, you'll never get in trouble if you keep following what nature did. Um, so, so we, but that would these open other questions about this. And so, uh, so, so then I say, okay, well, there's probably some other thing going on in the grid cells too. That the grid cells are not just a bunch of modules that are different phases or different, you know, slight different orientations or the different projections. It's probably not like it. it probably is. It's sort of like we have one 2D and somehow that 2D grid cell module apparently with some with some maybe something else um, is going to just like here we added something else to you know this vector. Um, you know, the complete solution is not the simple elegant one, the simple elegant orthogonal one. If the complete solution is more complicated, and um, and so probably the complete solution on the the location in grid cell modules thing is going to be not the simple one either. It's going to become something like this. So this is all a way of saying, okay, I accept this. This is good to know. Wouldn't have guessed this in the slightest, but that's what that's what's reality. And um, so, but then I said to myself, okay, so now let's run with this basic idea. And, and we need to come up with a complete system. In the end, we want to be able to predict what your finger is going to feel at any orientation, at any location on the coffee cup. You know? um, and it's going to look like that neural structure we have uh, that we, we're familiar with. So I just want to keep reminding ourselves that's the end goal. The end goal is to find that ultimate solution um, that, that both explains all this and all the grid cell stuff. And, and uh, so I'm just reminding ourselves that the, this is a waypoint along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very nice when you did have simulation sense. Okay, I just want to keep saying you're going to hear me say it over and over and over again. That's not going to go away because <laughs> um, we don't want to lose track of that that goal. Okay. I mean, for objects, we don't have a gravity to help us. No, we might have. We might have a, like a shape or something yeah. like that. 
in there. Um, as long as it's, I guess, we can find it consistently for an object, we're okay. That's right. That's um, the question. That's, uh, is there a way, suppose we just pick one based on the shape or whatever initially, but when we come up to that object again, is there a way of imputing what that must have been, like figure that out? Um, like, um, you know what I mean? It's, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a, we don't have to, the second time we're, when we're learning it, we have to pick something. Yeah. When inferring it, we may not have to pick the same thing. We may be able to infer what it was. Well, I think you have it. to. In, in some sense, it's, it's like, um, you know, the way I, uh, the way I would think about it, you know, you sense something and you're not only determining your location, you don't know your location, but you don't even know what the object you're on. So you determine right. both of those at the same time. Well, now you're sensing something, you have to, you have to determine, you have to, you're trying to resolve all these variables at the same time. You're trying to resolve your, your gravity vector equivalent, your orientation, and your location and object. And, and these are obviously all integrated together in a column. A column does all these things, corporate column, it does all these things, they're all integrated, they're all resolved simultaneously. I, it's not like you're going to figure out your orientation and then figure out your location. It seems to me that you're going to, all these are getting resolved simultaneously somehow. Yeah, because they all kind of impact each other. Yeah, and we know that these orientation columns, uh, well, well, we know that the features which look like orientation in the core column for, for go throughout the entire, uh, all the layers, as far as we know, and um, there's lots of evidence for that. So it's sort of like your sensory input that's coming in. Let's just call it sensory input. The sensory input coming in, you run it through like a spatial bullet, and now you got the mini column representations. Um, if that's what that is, it's impacting every layer. Every layer is basically getting this, this has some sort of representation that's partially driven by the sensory input. And so whatever the layers are representing the, the orientation and representing the, the grid cells and so on, they're all getting, they're all being driven by the same process. It's like you've got this, this input that's coming in and the movements are coming in and you're trying to resolve all these issues at the same time. So it seems like they're not really separate problems. Or, well, we can we can break them apart into separate conceptual issues, but it seems like the solution is all of them at the same time. We're inferring all of them, so we're probably inferring the the, the we have to infer the uh, you know if I reach my hand into the into a, a, a black box and I feel something I can't with one sensation I don't know the, the orientation vector. So we just need the circuit for it. Yeah. Well, I okay. I think that's me. That's what I want to do, right? Exactly. Yeah. Somehow, again, if we could say that. If we could say, if we could tell exactly what you're, the analysis you're doing now with orientation cells, we could do the exact same thing with grid cells. Let's say, oh, there's only one grid cell module. And as the tank paper showed, we know that there's some variations in the representation, so this, we, we know that. Um, so if we said, okay, there's, there's orientation, there's grid cell modules, there's gonna be the sensory input, and all these things are interacting with the way we see them connected to the cortex, can we, can we resolve how all of this gets resolved um, through that mechanism? And uh, that's that's the uh, three depths like the ultimate goal. So we're different. This is sort of defining the problem and part of the solution, right? It's like, oh, this is a clever thing. We didn't think about this. Is part of the solution. I wouldn't have guessed this, you know. So that's good to know. For inferring the orientation, um, for that, um, there's a very good chance that we use some heuristic to um, we use a common heuristic across environments across objects um, to anchor our head direction cells. Are you talking about head direction cells or, 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 or fingers? Or uh, the similar, like when you look at an object, you kind of search for the, the main axis of the object. Well, let's say I'm touching then, something. Okay, so that, yeah, I agree. I agree. But also I have to be able to, I have to be able to imagine the scenario where I'm just touching with one finger. So my first guess could be, hey, if I feel an edge, it's going to be aligned along the edge. That would be my best guess. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be less likely, you know, that's the best guess you could do. Right? So if I feel, you know, uh, I think that would be the best guess. I don't yeah, know. but if you're here, you make the wrong guess. I, right? I know. So, so obviously we can't tell. So it's going to be resolved through movement and additional sensation. Um, but I don't think we can rely. I mean, the, the vision is always like a special case in my mind because the vision might say, oh, well, all the uh, you know, we can determine that very quickly. Um, but, you know, I don't want to rely on the fact, oh, I have this, I envision I might be able to just sort of take a big picture and some cells extract it. The system has to work too, it's just in fingers. Um, yeah. 
the thing I said about heur the heuristic for anchoring head direction cells is also a Kate Jeffrey paper. I mean, not, not the same one, but uh, that they had the nice results that showed that in different environments that are the same shape, grid cells anchor um, differently, but head direction cells anchor the same. Essentially, that's the most succinct way I could say it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like a black room and a white room, uh, the head direction cells, well, head direction cells anchor the same way in both rooms, but grid cells translate. Yeah. And so that that's really nice. Well, that's an important point. I mean, at times I've been arguing that if, if the orientation cells or the head direction, if they're the same orientation cells, if orientation cells in the cortex were really doing these orthogonal projections of the space, then you could have the same sort of uniqueness of orientation that you have in grid cells, which is in grid cells. Like your orientation representation could be unique to the object. Um, uh, but that implies not. If, if, uh, if the orient you're saying it doesn't matter in different rooms, as long as they have the same uh, the basic shape, so the grid cell see them as different. Yeah. And the, or in the head direction cell see them as the same. Yeah. So that was, that's, that's a big clue. Yeah. And okay. that's been replicated, the recent one from. Uh, Kia Hardcastle. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's been replicated. So and then we get back to when we were when we were talking. With and Will we were, uh, we were talking a few weeks ago about you know what if if this if the input's going to be predicted uh, predicted in layer four in the cortex. Well, what is the inputs that require you know what what is what information uh, must be represented in layer six a and so uh, this impacts that. It means if I were to say okay, I have to have an orientation representation that's independent of the object. You end up with a different sort of circuit model than if you had the uh, orientation was needed to uh, the specific to the object. So um, I think this is great because I think all these details are these constraints. As I always talk about those constraints, where you, you know we can um, it, it helps us to the answer is going to become clear in the end when we have enough of these constraints that oh, we know all these little details and just oh it has to be this way. Um, but right now I guess and it could be wrong. You know, I guess wrong. Anyway, it's great. So what's the next step? Yeah, uh, 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 to, honestly, to figure out the next step. But my next step <laughs> is to figure out the next step. I mean, that's just what happens when I figure something out like this at 9 p.m. I would love it if you could think about the grid cell problem. Like, what if I told you you only had one grid cell model? Uh, to be clear, I, I have no problem finding my own next steps, but I'll listen. All right, but you work here, and I'm just <laughs> I know, I know. so I'm, uh, I'm, 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 not, I'm not thinking like you need help. I'm thinking like <laughs> I need help, and I'd like you to help me. Um, we need help, and I'd like you to help us. So uh, I think it's important for us to move in that direction. Um, uh, I mean, if we spent the next year working out this stuff, I would be disappointed. I think we need to go on to say, okay, at some point we get enough of this, understand what can we now think about. And we might even be the best way of progressing forward is saying, okay, can we think about how the same type of solution can come out if I had a single grid cell module? Uh, and all of our papers so far, I've been assuming we have multiple grid cell modules. And and we're doing it by this, you know, a sample from different grid cell modules. But um, that may not be true. And it looks more and more like it's not true. So, um, you know, so that's to me like the big, uh, that to me like the, I, the two, I were to identify the next big problem that's going to be more likely to break open this whole thing, that would be it. Like, how could I get grid cells to work with a single module? What, would, what additional information would I need, just like here? You've got orientation to work with a single orientation module. We yeah, had introduced a vector, the Gowry vector. What could we do on um, grid cells that are equivalent to that? All right, that's my suggestion. Not that you asked for one. <laughs> suggestion. That's what I would work on if I wasn't writing this book. All right. Yeah, well, that's very, nice. very nice. Cool. Very nice. Well, okay. We're done. I like to you guys are done. Do you want me to shut this? Shut it down. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna log off of the double. If you guys will take one, take it back. I'll take that back. Thank you.